Hey, it's Joseph here. You guys have clicked on this video to learn about this new 2.9 update of Enscape. And I'm also glad to announce that Enscape is sponsoring this video for me to run through the updated feature list. The most notable feature of this update is actually custom asset library. And I think this is actually quite a big one. Up until now, there's been sort of a hidden and convoluted way to develop your own custom assets inside of Enscape. But with this release, the doors have flung wide open and the process has been streamlined. For the average users, we have been relying on what Enscape decides to release in terms of asset library. And please don't get me wrong, the amount of assets and the quality of the assets they produce is quite solid and have been incredibly useful for me as well. And if we look at the amount of assets that are currently available, we are just shy of 2000 assets in the Enscape asset library. But anyways, let me steer your eyes towards this new tab that is labeled as custom assets. And if you actually open the custom assets for the first time, you'll be greeted with this message here, step one of two, and you need to set the asset projects. And this folder is basically where all the working files of the custom assets are gonna be stored. So you can just dedicate a folder and then just click on next. And the next one is the generated assets. And once they are made, all the custom ones are going to be stored on elsewhere. So this one, in my case, I have dedicated inside of my documents folder. I have Enscape and all of the assets are going to be stored under there. And then I have another folder that is dedicated for all the custom assets that I have created. I can just save and close. And once you have dedicated all of that, you'll see sort of the blank screen. There's gonna be two buttons that are available for you and you will see the same buttons down here as well as being able to reconfigure the source path of all the custom assets. So before we jump into creating a new asset, let's just kind of pause there and then let's look for an asset that we are gonna use for this specific example. And one of the very good way and also free way to get 3D models is from SketchUp's 3D Warehouse. And you might ask, what about Revit? Actually, we'll get there. Just follow along, then you'll figure it out. So let's jump on to 3D Warehouse. In here, I can actually go to Window and then 3D Warehouse inside of SketchUp. And if you don't have SketchUp, you can actually look for it on your browser as well. But here in this case that I have SketchUp, I'm gonna look for AVI chair. And then these chairs should show up. And then what I'm interested in is this AVI 01 soft seating. In the previous dialog, I can just click on this button right here, download. And then I can load this directly into my SketchUp model. And I'm gonna click yes. And then I can just place this somewhere inside of the model. And it would actually be the easiest if I just click on the origin of the project. So there you go, the origin has matched. And I'm gonna delete this template file that I have. And depending on what sort of file that you get from 3D Warehouse, you may or may not end up with weird layers that goes in here. And I'm only seeing my custom layers. So if I purge, all of those layers are going to go away. And there's no weird material that are included inside of this file, which is very good. Otherwise, if you find anything that is hidden inside of this component, then you're gonna have to kind of do the cleanup of this file. The only thing that I have noticed about this component is the fact that nothing is inside of group or component. So what I'm going to do is triple click on this one, make it into a group, triple click on this one to make it into a group and then triple click on the leg part and then make it into a group. And then now it is comprised of three different groups and there's no raw geometry that is going to float around, which is sort of the standard practice for SketchUp models. And that is all contained inside a single component that is named as AVI01 soft seating. And also I'm going to import something else into this file. So go to file import and then I can locate this AVI preview file, import. 
So this is basically a shape that I made that is just following the shape of this chair. And it is important that they kind of match in terms of the origin. So if I double click onto this file here, notice how the origin is right here where I want it to be. However, if I double click in this one, the origin is right here. So I'm gonna have to reset that. I can either do a right click on the axis and then do a place and try to land that. Or I can use another plugin that is called Axis Tools by TomTom Tom. and set origin. I can do all the center and the Z axis to be at the bottom. Once I do that, I can exactly locate that where I want it to be. So if I go to Move Tool, I can click on the origin and then basically match all the origin possible. So there you go, the origins have matched and we are now ready to export. And the simple geometry that I have brought in is for the placeholder geometry, basically sort of like the preview or the proxy that we are going to show inside of your model because the complexity of these files that you put in are not necessarily so friendly for the modeling software that you are going to use. So from here, I'm going to go to file export 3D model and for the file type, we're going to click on OBJ file because that's the file format that we're going to use. And then I'm just going to dedicate a name of AVI chair. And then let's make sure we click on this options dialog, which we're going to uncheck all of these on the top if they are checked and also check on this one export texture maps because we want the texture and then swap Y and Z coordinates Y is up and also the units to meters from the model units the reason for this is because Enscape asset library understand all the units in meters so click on OK and then we're gonna export and after a short while it is going to export the file and then prompt us a little message telling us how many faces that this file has and also how many materials and the textures. Okay. And also we're going to unhide all so that we bring up this placeholder geometry back and then hide this original geometry. And then we're going to go to file and export and do the exact same process. So this one, we're going to name it as AVI chair placeholder and then just check on options briefly again and then export again and that is going to be much faster because it is much simpler geometry okay and now we are ready so from here i'm gonna just load the asset library again and once this dialog shows up i'm gonna click on the custom assets tab and then just click on this plus sign here and then this dialog is going to show up and the first thing that we're going to do is dedicate a title avi chair as we have been doing so far and then description we're just going to say chair for testing and then we're going to click on the import geometry so import geometry on the desktop i have this one avi chair obj open and you'll notice everything just brought in as we have expected here you can see sort of the preview of what the chair was inside of our sketchup file and on the preview you can use the same key as how you would use inside of enscape wast and q and e and also a little tip here is to press the number pad so four, five, six, and two would give you these sort of standard views that are available. And you can hit zero to get this sort of animation view to the front. As they're not really labeled, they're just not really out there, but you can press those keys to get these sort of standard views that are available for you. Let's look towards the left. You'll see all the materials have been included here. The first one is the material that we had right here. So you'll see the color will shift. So this one is the back fabric here and then the orange fabric. And then the front color is basically what SketchUp gives you. We're not really using on the specific scene here. And then we have the metal silver material, which is the leg. So in this case, we want to go ahead and change the metal silver a little bit so that it looks more metallic and then to what we sort of expect it to look like. So we can just kind of decrease the roughness so that it looks a bit more glossier. And then as we increase the metallic value, you'll see how it becomes a little bit more 
chrome-like and metallic as we envision it to be. And then just for fun, if we look up here for the orange fabric, you'll see it is kind of looking this way, but we're gonna change this to carpet. You can expect the similar behavior as what we usually see inside of Enscape. It just turns into this fur carpet-like material. It is gonna be much softer to sit on, so we're gonna keep it as that. And then, if we look at here, we don't really need to mess with the scaling factor because we have changed the units to meters before and the up axis as Y. We just need to change the placeholder geometry. So once we click on that little button, we can dedicate a placeholder geometry we exported before. So we can just click on open and the placeholder geometry has been brought in and we can just click on show in preview to confirm that they have been brought in exactly the same spot. Sometimes this doesn't so that you might have to hunt for if we have not matched the origin carefully. And next thing we're going to do is basically look at the model in a way that you can recognize from far away because we're about to capture the thumbnail. So we can just click on this camera button right here and then it is going to be rendering that specific scene and then saving it for you and then we're going to save the project and basically the saving means that we're just saving the working file so we can come back to it and edit later so it is going to save on the projects so we're just going to click on save and once i have done that i'm going to click on this generate asset and generate asset meaning that we are writing out to the asset library so as i have clicked that one asset generated has been confirmed and i can just i can just come out of it and you'll notice that chair now is brought in as expected onto this custom asset library and then i can just click on this one and place that on my current project Notice how the placeholder geometry is showing up instead of the original chair. But if we go to the rendering screen and notice how in the rendering screen, they show up as we have envisioned them to be. So there you go. You are able to create your first new custom assets inside of Enscape from SketchUp 3D Warehouse. And since we are finished, let's actually bring that specific custom asset into Revit side. See how I was leading towards this? Let's go ahead and start Revit 2021 and we're going to use the basic sample project from Revit so that everyone is familiar with what we are doing here today. And once that is loaded, I'm just going to go to level 01 where we are looking at this sort of the room legend plan and then we're gonna go zoom into right here and then go to Enscape Asset Library, click on that. And then this dialog will pop up and under the custom assets, you'll see the chair that we just made, which is a good sign, right? So we can click on that one and then bring that in to Revit plan here. It's going to hang for a bit as it needs to download the elements. And as we hover over, you'll see that the dimension is basically following you. And if I click on one, I'm going to get a message saying this is not visible in this scene. It is because all the assets that are made on Enscape side is coming in as a planting. And this plan does not have planting turned on. And then we can hit escape a couple of times. And then we can hit VG for visibility and graphics. And here I'm going to hit P once to find planting and then check that one and then OK. And you'll see that that has been brought in. And now I can actually copy this one over and then now we have two different chairs. Let's go ahead and start Enscape as well on this view here. And you'll see the chairs have been brought in, but they're sort of floating in the mid space. So let's see what has gone wrong here. So if I were to snap this screen to the right and then rev it to the left, you'll see that as I click on these two chairs, you'll see the hosted level is actually level one and they actually have a different level for the living room. So if we click on that one, you'll see all the chairs are brought onto the floor of the living room. And if we wanna actually go out to the deck, this person is sitting outside, we can actually just move all of that to the deck area so that it is behind the her so we can nicely lay it out for this specific scene so now you have successfully brought your custom asset from sketchup 
to Revit and brought into your Revit scene. I think this opens up a lot of possibility for different workflows that everyone has to bring in 3D assets from different software such as SketchUp. So the SketchUp 3D warehouse is great, but traditionally it hasn't been the easiest to bring those assets into Revit. However, you can maintain all the visibility and the materiality and bring it into Revit this way. I'm sure you'll be overwhelmed with all the ideas that are popping in your heads right now. And before I move away from the assets library, if we go back to the original Enscape assets library, you'll now see a little checkbox that is available calling out offline Enscape assets and now I actually have it checked. That means all the files are going to be saved locally, which means you don't need to wait a long time for all of those assets to load. We don't have to use the limited bandwidth of internet at home since we're all sort of working from home and we don't wanna use all that data trying to load all the assets every time we wanna put in some sort of asset onto our file. So as soon as I saw this, I just kind of checked on it and allowed all the assets to download and waited a bit as they do have a quite large library. But after that, it just remains as checked and everything has been saved onto my local drive. The next feature that I wanna cover is called displacement maps. Enscape does have very good bump map and normal map capabilities. However, you were not able to do displacement map up until now. So here I have a simple setup where I have a ground and also a giant cube behind these two people. And now I'm going to create a new material and then look for this specific file, wood siding and color. So open this on SketchUp side and take the one foot of scaling and then just gonna name this as wood and then okay this and then I'm going to apply that map onto here and that is coming out way too little so I'm gonna increase this to 10 feet and you'll see how it becomes much larger and that is too large so that's gonna reduce it down to five feet and as I have done that you'll see now this cube has been wrapped around with the sort of log looking half circle Siding. With that, if I go to the Enscape screen, you will now see that that has been mapped like so and it is looking somewhat flat. And actually, because Enscape allows you to put some bump map, let's go ahead and snap this screen to the left so we can see the rest of the Enscape screen. And here I can use this use albedo button. And then as I have done that, it's going to assign that color map onto the bump map and basically increase the bump amount. If we go closer, you'll see that it is going from flat to a bit of bump. It is not as apparent, but the texture is going to be more defined. Certain textures are gonna have better bump and definition, but this texture is not doing its justice as I want all of this to kind of appear as the half circle siding. So with that, I can go here and click on this image. And just to prove the point, I can go for the normal map that is dedicated for the specific material. I can go back to the general and then Enscape just automatically change that to the normal map. And then from here, I can just increase that and it, it is looking better. However, it is not really doing all of detailing that I wanted it to do because it is in distance, I guess it's okay, but it is looking still quite flat and not as much definition. However, if we go and actually click on that, change to the displacement map that has been provided on this package. And then if we go back to here and change the type to the displacement map, and then just increase that amount, you'll see how that it is now much more defined. And this material package is freely available from cc0textures.com. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to download on your own and test it yourselves. And you'll be amazed how much of a difference it creates. And the reason for all of this is because both the bump map and a normal map is sort of the artificial way of distorting an image to make it look like it is sort of the 3D object instead of the flat surface. However, the displacement map is physically changing the geometry so that they receive light differently. So it does explain kind of why it makes such a big difference. 
And then this one brings us to the next feature that I want to talk about, video textures. This is actually quite an interesting one is I never really needed this specific feature, but I was aware that a lot of other people were needing this feature onto Enscape. So they were really searching for it, but there was simply no way to get it done. However, now it is possible. As I use SketchUp and Revit daily, I have tested the methods to bring in video texture onto those two softwares. And while SketchUp is quite easy, on Revit, it was a little bit more difficult. Therefore, I want to show you the SketchUp way first. So on this example file here, I have this living room set up with the TV behind. You would normally have all of the sofa turned this way so that it faces the TV, but that is besides the point. And on this specific scene here, if we go to the Enscape side, you'll see that everything has been set up like this. Let me go ahead and synchronize the view so that we are looking at the same angle of shot. It is showing the TV. It is pretty much turned off at this point. So let's go ahead and turn it back on and have them watch my own video. So on here onto the SketchUp side, I can bring on the Enscape Materials dialog. And once that shows up, let's make sure we have sampled the TV screen. So I can sample on some other material, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and sample the TV screen. So I actually have TV screen material shown here. And then on the albedo texture, there is a plus button here. And I'm just going to click on that one. And on the desktop, I actually have my own video saved as MP4 format. And I'm just going to click on that one and then open. And you'll see that texture is now my video. And then you'll also see that on the SketchUp side, an image has been brought in. And when you actually bring this specific material onto your model, it is going to look somewhat tile like this. You can adjust the scaling of the texture to kind of position it in the way you want it to be. So five feet, but you're always gonna end up with some sort of seam somewhere. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Right click onto the surface and then position. And then I can actually position this onto the one corner and then basically bring this out. If the image is correct ratio, my case is actually 16 by nine ratio. But if it is not cropping correctly, you can actually go a little bit over just so that you can kind of crop over it. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I can just escape out of that so that all the image has been set up correctly. And then I'm going to go back to that specific scene and then look at it from the Enscape side. So that has been brought in. However, it is not moving. It's because I need to move a little bit for the videos to continue playing in the background. And if I kind of let go, it is going to kind of pause on that moment. If you want to disable that, we can go to general settings and under the settings, we can go down to performance and there's going to be a checkbox for rest mode. And if we uncheck that, and go back to Enscape. Once we start moving so that we are nudging, as we have stopped moving, it is going to continue playing whatever that we have dedicated onto your TV. So now everyone can enjoy my own videos even inside of Enscape. And then we are on to the different part of the world where things are a little bit more difficult. But if you follow along, you'll get it. So here is a example file that I have prepared. It is sort of the simple retail project that I just kind of made on my own. Here is a bulkhead that I want to put sort of the Times Square like TV screen onto so that I can now be famous with my own videos. So if we go to Enscape side and then actually render this up, we can just kind of fly in and just kind of aim at that bulkhead that we are going to work with. And then from here, we're going to click on manage ribbon and then go to materials. And from here, we're going to create a brand new material by clicking on create new material. And then we're going to call this as digital screen. And then under the graphics tab and foreground pattern, we're going to change that to eight inch tile. 
then change the color to blue so we can spot it easily. And I'll tell you why we are doing this in a bit. Then under the identity, we are gonna click on the description part and then we are going to paste in this specific text that we have here. Either you can type this in on your own or I'll leave the same text on my description so you guys could copy and paste as well. And from here, we're gonna go to our desktop and look for the video file we are trying to use. Shift and right click and that way you'll see copy as path. And once we click that, we have copied the path. And here, highlight the path portion with the little brackets on either side, right click and paste. And you'll see the double colon that shows up. You have to delete these. So I have deleted those. And then for the X and Y value, and because my project is an imperial unit, this is gonna be feet. So I'm gonna dedicate 16 by nine ratio of X and Y, 32 feet by 18, which is double of 16 by nine ratio of the video file format. And then I'm just gonna replace this rotation as zero. I don't need any rotation whatsoever. So this is an example of what the final value is going to look like. And then I can just hit okay. And once we have accepted that, obviously nothing is showing up because we have not used the material. So let's go ahead and paint. I can just click on modify. And then here I have a paint. I have PT as a shortcut for painting materials. So here I'm gonna look for the same material that we were using, digital screen, and then I can highlight on this bulkhead and then basically apply that texture there, done. And then if we go to the Enscape side, you'll see that my texture or my video is now showing up. It is being played, which is good. However, it is not positioned in a way that I intended it to be. So I can go back to the Revit side. In this case, I can go to South Elevation and you'll see that bulkhead. Now I can just hit tab a couple of times to find this line here and I can basically either nudge it up or move it to a specific amount and see how it impacts on the Enscape side. Let's go ahead and snap this screen on the left so we can see the change. Let's go ahead and move a bit further up. Okay, I want the screen to be somewhere centered. So I want more up. Okay, and I want to nudge to the left. So let's go ahead and move again to the left. Is that good enough? It is kind of cutting on my head. Let's lower it a bit. So that is now showing up. Okay, so my videos could play on building bulkheads now too. And again, if you want Enscape to continue playing your video instead of stopping as soon as you let go of your mouse or keyboard, then you can uncheck the rest mode so that the video continues playing. And the next topic is, as always, more assets into the asset library. And this time it's looking like the fitness assets are added to your library and all of those should show up with a little new tag that is next to the thumbnails and you'll be able to enjoy putting those assets into your projects. And those assets would be particularly useful for those of you who work on gym projects and any outdoor projects such as parks and entertainment districts and such. And another thing that I want to quickly mention is the fact that Enscape is now fully supporting Vectorworks as well. And with that, I am out of things to talk about. I hope this video wasn't too long. It is kind of hard to keep the video short when there is a lot of great feature to cover. And as another Enscape user in the field, I genuinely appreciate the amount of work that they put in inside of this already great product. And I'm really glad they're attempting to do more than just the rendering software and aid in us professionals design process and bring more values to the services that we provide. And I also want to note that Enscape should be publishing their own release video as well. I'll leave a link in the description as well as a card for you to click here. And all the release details should be available to view via the link that I also leave in the description. And whilst you're checking out the description, you can click on the link for the 14 day trial of Enscape as well. If you have enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.